if I know these bad times are coming, I'm a regular guy, what do I, what else do I do to position myself better? Well, what a person does is what they can do. And since the average person has no financial education, they can't do much. So like, you know, I can short the market. I'll make more, more money as the shorts coming down. So I'm looking forward to it. But the average pensioner, they're handcuffed. They can't get out. If they take the money out, they're penalized 30%. They screwed them. Hmm. They screwed everybody. That's Wall Street, the government, and all these guys. So what can I do? I'm one of them. What do I do? Does it go back to employee, self-employed, business owner, investor? Like, go find a business, go start a business, go reposition yourself career-wise. You know, is there a, a, a one, two, three step process on what I can do to be prepared for it? You should have gold and you should have silver. You should have museum quality artwork and real estate, income producing real estate. Like you have. So right now when you're looking as a lens, so don't look at yourself as who you are today. Let's go back to you're out of the Marines. Okay. You're, I don't know, 32 years old. Okay. You're 30 to 35 years old. You've just started a family. Okay. You're just getting married. You're just about to have a kid. You don't have a lot of money to yourself. Maybe you got 20, 30, 40, 50 grand. You know, you got something going on. But you know this is coming. And you're watching and saying, okay, this makes sense to me. I buy into it. This time is coming. How do I pivot now with industries that I can look at that could be good ways to position myself for 5, 10, 15 years from now? Again, if this is Robert 30 to 35, how would you position yourself at that time? You don't have a lot of money. Well, you and I are educators, really. Mm -hmm. And there's something you should know about, you know, technology, all these cameras. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's called the Lindy effect. This Nazim Talib wrote about it. He says, anything that's been new in the last 20 years will be gone in 20 years. What's going to survive is old. So everybody thinks, well, technology is going to make it. What survived is old. It's the reason gold and silver will survive is because it's old. Bitcoin may not survive because it's new. I'm not telling you what to buy. I'm just telling you how to think. The guy that's going to survive is somebody who is not fragile, anti-fragile. So what he says is this, whatever doesn't kill you will make you stronger. So he says, when you go to the gym and you pump weights, you push 100 pounds, that means the next time you push, you might go 105. So bad times will make the strong. Another thing they should know is the bigger something gets, i.e. our banks, the more fragile. So the two big to fail companies are more fragile. For fragile. More fragile. More fragile. And the, and the companies that will survive are like our companies because we're small. Nimble. Yeah. We make quick adjustments, well, quick the, moves. The bigger they are, the harder they fall, right? So you're working for a big company like Google. You might be safe today, but you might be gone tomorrow. Whereas you're a little startup, you might have a better chance. I'm not saying what it is, but there's something everybody can do. Like I said, everybody can buy a $20, $20 silver piece. Everybody can afford 20 bucks. Will they do it? No. They'll be at Starbucks sucking it down instead. So what would the 30 to 35 year old Robert Kiyosaki do right now? What industry would you be looking at today to make your money? I'd be in this business. You would still be in this business? Education. Look at this. Content. Look at what we're doing. Wow. Look at what we're doing. You know, I mean, I have, I have several YouTube channels going out. I, mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm doing, but I have young people doing it for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. So I'd be with technology. Now the cameras will be obsolete, but you can buy a new camera. Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't invest in the camera. I'd buy a camera, but I wouldn't invest in the company. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, it's how you think about this right now. So just know that those who are in big companies who think they're safe might be at the most at, at risk. You know, if you're working for Bank of America or Wells Fargo, you might be at risk. A lot of people see that as a scary time. A market crashes around the corner. What am I going to do? I'm going to lose everything. I'm going to go through this. How does somebody like you, from your lens, how do you view today's economy and what's taking place? Well, first of all, the reason I wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad was because I knew this time was coming. And we have, as a world, I've never been here before. And so is it a spooky time? Damn, yeah. It is, a, it is probably the most dangerous time ever, 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 ever. There's nothing to compare it to because there's never been a world economy before. For example, you know, a hundred years ago, if there was a stock market crash in England, it didn't affect anybody. Mm. Now the U.S. market goes down, the world goes down. So plus with social media and all this we're doing now, and so we've never been here before. And uh, you know, I, I, I'm excited about it because I make more money in crashes than I do when they go up. So, but for the average person, they'll get wiped out. I'm afraid at the worst. I hope I'm wrong, but I think we're heading for a global depression. Global depression. Yeah. What does that look like? 
depression. I mean, people are depressed. The economy stays down, it's hard to come back up. And now the good news is, is that for those who are prepared for it, like you and like this, you'll do better. And not everybody dies in a plane crash, some plane crashes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the last crash in 2008, you know, I was on Wolf Blitzer's program uh, six months before Lehman Brothers went down. And I said Lehman was going down. <laughs> and nobody listened, but it went down. And so I've been expecting this market to go down for quite a while. And I'm concerned about my fellow my fellow human beings. But as you know, most Americans are clueless. You know, they don't know what's going on. But you know, if you travel the world, I, I just I just I just got back from Africa and China and Japan and New Zealand. People are scared. Mm -hmm. Australia was has had a recession in 30 years, it's in recession. But Americans are fat, dumb, and happy having a good time, which is good. But I'm concerned. That's all I can say. I, I'd, be, I'd be afraid if I had kids. You'd be afraid about having kids to be? If I had kids. No, I, you know, I, I think as an adult, you can go hungry, but you don't want to see your kids gone. And that's what's going to happen. You think it's going to get that bad? Let me ask you this. What is the biggest factor that's going to cause that? Well, the reason I wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad is the U.S. dollar. You know, that's my book over there, Fate, which came out last year. Fake money, fake teachers, fake assets. And the U.S. dollar is fake. Never in, the, never in the history of the world has any fake money ever survived. And we're doing the same thing. We just keep printing this money. And when I wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad 20, almost 25 years ago, people said I didn't know what I was talking about. You know, I said, I said savers would be losers. Now, today, there's quantitative easing, which is counterfeiting money. Mm -hmm. And then you have zero interest rates. And people are still saving money. I mean, that's, they just printed, I think, $500 billion in September of this year because the repo market is going down. And the average guy goes, well, what's the repo? They don't know. So that's why it's fake money, fake teachers, fake assets. Our, our education system, it, it has been my rant forever. Why don't we teach people about money? Why is it? We all use money, but we don't teach people about it. So that's why I'm concerned and, um, I wrote this book, Who Stole My Pension? It's already sold out. But I wrote Who Stole My Pension because it was the reason I wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad. The two authors here, me and myself, uh, Edward Sedell, we both had dads who lost everything. And when I was in my 20s and my dad, my poor dad lost everything, it scarred me. And I said, I'm never going to let anybody ever do that to me. So I had just come back from Vietnam in 73. My dad was unemployed, Porter was unemployed. And he tells me, go fly for the F and airlines. I said, are you kidding me? And he says, go back to school, get your master's and get your PhD. I said, are you kidding me? Here the guy is unemployed. He's got no pension. He's got no paycheck. And he told me to go back to mm. school. I said, what, learn nothing? You know, and those guys who my, uh, you know, my friends who flew for United Airlines, mm -hmm. they're broke today. Their pension, their pensions were stolen. U.S. Air, same thing. Look at what's going on in Paris today as we talk. They're rioting. Millions of people are rioting because of pensions. Japan, they're rioting because of pensions. It's terrible. You see them. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. And Americans, oh, I wonder how my 401k is doing. I'm going, gee, I'd be a little bit worried. But they don't know. Americans live in a fishbowl. You know, they can, everybody sees in, but Americans can't see out. Small ebook, Big Impact, The Wealth Tree. The only four ways that will make you financially free forever. Download it here for free.